Well, I got to be honest, no matter what story you think you have that is great, today's story trumps your story every time. It's going to be really incredible as we kick off a brand new series on the book of Acts. And uh, so you're listening to The Daily Bible Guys with Jeff and Chris. So, hey, we're trying to switch up the format a little bit. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, and uh, so here's what we thought we would do just for fun. We're going to be doing a couple different things this week. Okay. And uh, the first thing that we're going to be doing is trying to make each other laugh. And uh, by the way, I'm terrible at this. I know that you're better at this yes. than me. Well, uh, uh, almost everything I'm better <laughs> than you, but uh, <laughs> almost. So we're both dads. We are. And we love torturing our kids. Yes, of course. Yes, yes. So... So we're going to do dad jokes, and the first one to laugh loses. Oh, okay. Okay? Yeah. All right. You know you're not funny, so I'm not going to laugh at this whole what's thing. What's corny dad jokes? Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. ready? All I'm right. going to start, right. then we'll just keep All going. Right. You ready? And I, and I can't laugh if you tell me a, a dumb okay. one. Okay. Why do fathers take an extra pair of socks when they go golfing? I don't know. In case they get a hole in one. Oh, yeah. I saw that one coming. Okay. What's the difference between bird flu and swine flu? I don't know. One requires a tweetment, the other one an ointment. <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you serious? The first one you left at. That's really funny. Boy, you're an easy mark. <laughs> oh, okay. That's, that's terrible. Right. That that's is terrible. terrible. Uh, tweetment, ointment, get it? Oh, okay. my God. That was really good. Um, uh, might as well read a few more since I blew okay. it already. Yeah, you blew it on the first one. What do you call a fish wearing a bow tie? I don't know. Sophisticated. <laughs> okay. Oh, you almost got a laugh. Yeah, out of yeah, a little bit. You got kind of a grunt. Okay. Uh, how do you follow Will Smith in the mud? Follow the Fresh Prince. Oh, that's mm, terrible. No, okay. that's terrible. Okay. If April brings May flowers, what does May bring? I don't know. Pilgrims. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's terrible. I don't get that one. I don't know. I don't know. It's don't written know. here on, on, on some website. Dude, this is a, a flop, I'm afraid. What did the baby corn say to the mama corn? Where's oh. popcorn? Oh, wow. Yeah? yeah no? That was pretty bad. Was that bad? All right, one more. One more. This is getting okay. bad. Go ahead. No, you got to do it. Oh, okay. Uh, why do seagulls fly over the ocean? I don't know. Because if they flew over the bay, we'd call them bagels. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's one. I haven't spoken to my wife in four years. I thought it'd be rude to interrupt her. Wow. <laughs> wow. That sounds like a great place oh, no, to end. We better in there. We better in there. Yeah. Because wow. uh, I hope Bonnie's not listening today. Yeah, no I, doubt. I just read it off the sheet, man. There, there that's right. That was not written by Jeff. I did Jeff. not choose it. That's right. Yeah, that's It wasn't funny. written by me. So a little fun segment. And okay. I think we're going to try different things. Just different to, things. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So we are kicking off this series. Um built on the book of Acts, but we're going to start actually in Matthew. And mm. here's why. Because the end of Matthew is the beginning, of, is the resurrection and the beginning of the work of the, the leaders of the church, right? The, the movement of the church. And so we'll start off with the resurrection, and Jesus is going to give them the great commission to go out and spread the good news of the gospel. And then the book of Acts is all about the life of Peter and James and John and Paul and Silas and Barnabas and Timothy and Luke. And it's just this incredible forward movement, uh, an expansion in a very short amount of time of the gospel into Africa, into Central Asia, up into Europe. And they are, are just laying it on the line for the sake of the gospel. And it's one of the great adventure stories, quite honestly, in the Bible. And it lasts for a long time. And then what a lot of people forget is... In, in the middle of the book of Acts is where Paul's story really begins to pick up. And from that point to the end of the book of Acts, all the books that Paul wrote, he wrote during that time. And so what we thought we'd do is we would interject Paul's writings along with the story and kind of make all of the Pauline epistles fit into the book of Acts in context. And so I think it's going to be a really fun discussion. And what I want everybody to think of through this whole thing is he used merchants and tent makers and uh, uh, scholars and poor people and rich people and men and women and Jews and Gentiles. Uh, he used, God used all kinds of people to move his kingdom forward. It wasn't just the elite religious leaders. 
these guys are just normal people that are following Jesus' commands. Yeah, and so today, we're even though that we're sort of setting up the book of Acts with Jesus' final words, giving the Great Commission, right. uh, when we enter in and take this whole journey through the book of Acts, it's really sort of divided into two sections. Uh, the first 12 chapters are more focused on Peter's ministry, and then the last chapters from 13 to 28 is Paul's ministry. Right. And so and it's sort of the handoff where Paul takes it. Uh, and then there's, you know, there's mega themes throughout the throughout the book of Acts. The church beginnings, the mega theme of the Holy Spirit, church growth, witnessing opposition. And, and the timeline goes from where Jesus basically died on the cross, which is somewhere around 30 A.D., up until the destruction of Rome in 70 A.D. And so those 40 years is the journey, yeah. which, which encapsulates all of Paul's life and ministry, uh, which Paul's ministry technically began uh, actually, well, we're going to get into yeah, all yeah, that. We'll we're going to get into, into that. Yeah. 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 Well, good. So let's start off in Matthew 28. And uh, before we do that, I just want to remind people, this is the first episode of the Daily Bible Guys. Yeah, for sure. And we've talked about some of these topics in our previous podcast called HC Daily. Yeah. And uh, uh, so if some of this sounds familiar, that's okay, right? We're covering uh, We're covering some similar ground. Uh, but there'll be a lot of new things to talk about as well. But if you're a person that's been listening on HC Daily uh, and you've already signed up for those uh, emails and things like that, you're already in the list. We'll keep sending you those things. But if you have not yet signed up for the uh, the Daily Bible Guys podcast, um, make sure you go to uh, the Daily Bible Guys dot com or the Bible Guys dot com. I'm sorry, yeah, the Bible Guys, the Bible guys dot com, and uh, sign up, and we'll send you a link every single day for the podcast. You can either listen. Uh, on Spotify or whatever, or you can um, follow along on YouTube. So yeah. that'd be it. If you are sus- subscribed on YouTube for HC Daily, you are not automatically subscribed on YouTube for the Daily Bible Guys. So you'll need to find us there and uh, subscribe there, follow us, like us, leave a comment, that kind of thing. All right. right? Well, let's jump in. And make sure you tell Chris that his jokes were terrible. Okay. So here we go. <laughs> let's just read. We're going to read uh, Matthew chapter 28 today. It says, Early on Sunday morning, As the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow, and the guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women, Do not be afraid, he said. I know you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He isn't here. He's risen from the dead, just as he said he would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and he's going ahead of you to Galilee. You'll see him there. Remember what I've told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were frightened but also filled with great joy and they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them and they ran to him, grasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. As the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and told the leading priests what had happened. A meeting with the elders was called, and they decided to give the soldiers a large bribe. They told the soldiers, You must say, Jesus' disciples came during the night while we were sleeping, and they stole his body. If the governor hears about it, we'll stand up for you so you won't get in trouble. So the guards accepted the bribe and said, uh, said what they were told to say. Their story spread widely among the Jews, and they still tell it today. Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age." And that ends the book of Matthew. Yeah, it does. <clears throat> and it also ends Jesus' uh, uh, speaking career, right? These are his final words. Yeah, yeah. Well, well in uh, the first chapter of Acts, he's going to talk about the Holy Spirit. Oh, when he teaches for 40 That's days. That's right, and then he ascends. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. this is... In the Gospels. This, right, this is the end of it in the Gospels. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Not, not to mention he technically appears in front of Paul in Acts chapter 9, but That's we'll get correct. to that too. So, so, yeah. And then he talks in the book of <clears throat> But uh, But yeah, this is amazing. Uh, you know, when you yeah. when you read this, you think, hey, what are we at, Easter? Yeah. Yeah, right? Because right. this is always reserved for Easter. Uh, but, uh, you know, one of the things that stands out to me, there's a ton, of course, but, uh, you know, women were first at the cross and they were first at the tomb. Yeah. 
And uh, I love the fact that... And first with the message of the resurrected Christ. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And, and, and uh, when you connect the dots. Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, and I love how the angels... Uh, were described their 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 robes were like light, white as lightning. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. And it reminds me of the Transfiguration. You know what what must that have what must it have been like to to be up there with you know you know Peter James and John up on the mountain when Jesus uh, transformed and and it says it says his face shone bright as the sun. That's right. So it's it's pretty yeah. cool to think about. Well, th- this is incredibly important <clears throat> passage, and the reason why we wanted to start with this one is because. Christianity has no purpose apart from the resurrection. There, there, right. there, is, no, there is no purpose. Um, the resurrection is what sets Christianity apart from all other world religions. Uh, Buddha doesn't, didn't resurrect, right? We're, we're not looking, they're not looking to the living Muhammad. They're, they're not looking to... N- none of the other religions are looking to a living Savior. But because of the resurrection, it proves that Jesus is who he said he was. Because he said, I'm going to die, and three days later, I'm going to come back to life. And any guy that can pull that off, we should listen to it. Yeah, and uh, th- think about this. For all the skeptics in the world and those who uh, are opposed to Christianity, they've spent their entire lives, including our good friend Abdi Murray, mm-hmm. trying to uh, you know, prove that the resurrection either has, you know, either it's not true or that there's evidence that suggests that it's not sure, true. Sure. And, uh, and, and since, you know, 2,000 years since the event, Nobody has ever come close to it. In fact, the majority, not even just less than half, I would say the majority of people who, who, who press into that and spend their lives doing that end up believing in them, yeah, yeah. Be- yeah. believing in the events, I mean, right. and then ultimately in Jesus. And so, uh, you know, this, this event is grounded in history. And the reason why we have to tell people about it is because Christianity is not intuitive. You can't just sit under a tree. You can sit under a tree and think, hey, there must be a creator there must be a God, you know, you can probably come up with that, right. but there's no way you'll intuitively by yourself come up with, Hey, I think that maybe God so loved the world that he sent his only son and that he died on the cross to pay for the penalty that sin demands. Right. That is an event that is grounded in history. And the only way for history to be known is for it to be shared. That's right. And so this is why Jesus says in one of his last instructions, um, both here in Matthew 28 and then also in Acts chapter one, when we read that tomorrow, um, he says, now you're going to go be my witnesses. And the reason why you have to have witnesses is to confirm the facts. So right. you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, these four Gospels. These are eyewitness accounts saying, well, uh, three of the four, Luke wasn't an eyewitness, but he was interviewing eyewitnesses. The others are saying, this is what we saw. Jesus was dead. He was buried. He rose again. In this situation, Matthew is pointing out the fact that even then there were skeptics. There were people who were trying to obscure the facts and the truth. And this is why Jesus said, now you go be my witnesses and you have to tell everybody else what you've seen. And how powerful is that message with those first dozen or so people that go out with the gospel in the next couple chapters and say, we're not talking about something we're hoping for. This is something we saw. Mm-hmm. And then throughout the book of Acts, many of them wind up dying because of it or in prison because of it or punished mm-hmm. or beaten or persecuted. You know, when you think about the Trinity, you think about the way the scripture describes God in three persons, God uh, the Father, Jesus, the Son, and then the Holy Spirit that mm-hmm. indwells inside every believer. Uh, you think about the different dynamics of that, and they are they are, you know, woven together intrinsically, relationally, in a way that we'll never really understand. Uh, and so, I, I so I always wonder about these types of statements. The first thing that Jesus says when he gives the Great Commission is, "I have been given all authority in heaven." and on earth. Yeah. So he carries all the authority of God the Father. Right, right. Uh, and he's announcing to everybody who believes in the one God of Israel, and now the one God of the world, that he has the same exact authority. And it's just, it's just a great statement for me yeah. to try to wrap my brain around. Yeah, and with that authority then, he's delegating the authority of spreading the gospel to us. That's right. That's why the very next word is therefore. Anytime you read the word therefore, you want to find out what it's there for. That's right. So <laughs> <laughs> you had a cheesy professor in college too, huh? Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. But that word is really important because right. whenever you see the word therefore, you need to figure out, okay, why is this such an important statement? Because he's making a big statement now. Because of this, go do this. That, that's what's happening. So he said, because I've been given authority in heaven and earth, I'm delegating some of this responsibility to you. And so now go and make disciples of all nations. And so uh, you know, this has been a big part of the learning for me. I just got back from uh, Kathmandu in Dubai working with leaders 
who are working on the idea of making disciples who make disciples who make disciples, right? So for a long time, I think Christians have thought about the idea of how do we make disciples. But now I think there's a shift globally. How do we make disciple makers who make disciple makers? We're looking multiple generations beyond just the next Christian. And uh, that really is exciting because there, the difference is the difference between uh, addition and multiplication. If I'm only thinking, how do I add one more disciple, that's addition. One more, one more, one more. But if we're thinking, how do we make disciple makers who make disciple makers, now you're looking to a fourth generation uh, Christian. That, that's multiplication. And I think this is one of the reasons why at the exact same time that the global uh, population is exploding. I mean, we're going to be uh, 8 billion in November. They're saying in, in November we'll cross 8 billion. What year were you born? 71. 1971. In 1970, we were 3 billion. Wow. Think about that. There's been an explosion in the global population just in this uh, 51 years that you've been alive. Um, it, it, this massive explosion. And at the same time, there's been a strategic shift in not just thinking disciple making, but thinking make disciple makers who make disciple makers. And that's one of our goals, one of our heart's desires for the people listening to the podcast is to not only be thinking, how do I benefit from the gospel, but how do I help others benefit up from the gospel and teach them to help others, right? Mm-hmm. Do the same. And this is one of the reasons why we're looking at the book of Acts, is because if we can just go back, strip away all of the other things that church and Christianity and religion have become, and just get back to the original game plan, maybe we can see the same kind of move of God that, uh, it, that in our lifetime that we saw here in the book of Acts. I think that's why he gave us this, this book. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, I, I couldn't get my brain to turn off when you pointed out the fact that my, the population of the earth has almost tripled since we've been alive. Mm. I actually thought, we need, we need a Thanos. Thanos? No, no, we don't. <laughs> no. The, the end is coming, though. <laughs> right. Make no mistake, the end is coming, and there yeah. will be a day when every knee will bow, yeah. right? And he's going to flip the switch and say, okay, the human story's done. The, this part of... This creation is over, and then everybody's going to stand in judgment before God. And so He's given us this responsibility. So because He has all authority on heaven and earth, right? You need to go make disciples right now. There's a limited amount of time to do it. And and just in case anyone is wondering, this is the only mission. Well, I shouldn't say. I should say the church has a lot of different missions, but this is the mission of the church. Mm-hmm. So if people say, "What's the mission of the church?" Well, it's to uh, evangelize. Well, I mean that that's partly true. It, it is more than that. Evangelism is one part of it. It is to make disciples, which includes all the above. Right, right. right? For, if, you know, for somebody to put their faith in trust and then to uh, grow in their faith and then to serve others and then to live out faith and then to go and then make other disciples as well. Yeah. So that is the mission of the church. Everything we do is is driven from these verses in the Great Commission. Yeah. So the idea of being a disciple is a learner, right? Mm-hmm. I'm learning from my master. That's so so a, a disciple is somebody who has a master, and they're learning from this master teacher. In a moment, uh, you know, tomorrow we're going to start reading about the Acts of the Apostles. An apostle is a missionary. So they started off as learners, and then they understood that they're supposed to go and tell everybody. That, that really is the shift between the two. So it's the same goal that God has for us, because he says, go make disciples, baptize them. That's including them into the family of God in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. So what are those commands? Love God, love people, go make disciples. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. So then uh, we, we want to teach everybody, love God. That's what you want to teach your children. That's what you want to teach brand new believers. Love God, learn to love people. You're going to need to serve them and, 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 and care for them and put them first. And then go make new disciples. And then you teach those disciples to do the same thing, which is what? Love God, love people, make disciples. And, and, so, and, and do what you've been commanded to do, which is what? Love God, love people, and go make more disciples. And over and over and over again, it's a self-replicating process that's fairly simple. Oh, yeah, so but, simple. But we, we bog so it down So simple to live religion. out. Huh? <laughs> so simple to live out. It's, it's simple to understand. <laughs> right. Yeah. But we, we bog it down with all kinds of religious accoutrements, mm-hmm. and, and, and most people think of faith as a good luck charm to make their own life better, rather than realizing you're here for a purpose and God has you on a mission. That's it. Everything else is extra. Everything else is to fund the mission. Everything else is to move the mission forward. Now, enjoy the sunsets, go out to a nice restaurant, enjoy, enjoy a little league with your kids, certainly. But there's nothing more important in your life than this command right here. Go make disciples. 
right? Right. Yeah, and when we think about the big building blocks of our lives, uh, it, it should be, they, they should all, you know, sort of be around this thing. Yes. So, so in other words, I do go to Little League with my kids when my kids sure, were younger. Sure. I go to the movies with my kids. I watch yeah. TV. I do all those things. But my life is centered around this mission, mm-hmm. and regardless of whether I'm a you know vocational pastor or not. Yeah. Uh, because every Christ follower, every believer is called to do the same thing. Right. Uh, and we're just doing it you know, full time because we get paid to do it. That's right. Uh, but the bottom line is, is the mission is still the same for every single person. Um, you know what I think is great? <clears throat> I think that it's great that that uh, that Jesus sent them out. And we're, what we're about to journey into tomorrow is a story about the growth of the church. It's the it's the uh, you know, they go from, you know, just a, a handful of 11 disciples to, you know, a group of 120. And then they then they then they branch out from there, 3000 and and then 20,000. And they just keep on growing. Uh, but ultimately, and, and unfortunately, the followers here in this uh, setting all lose their lives, except for John. That's right. And, and so they all they all up giving their lives. And so the, they, they've given their lives for something they believe in so, you know, firmly and so, you know, absolutely that, they, that they're saying it's worth our very lives. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I, I look back at that and I say, man, I hate the fact that, like, why did God <laughs> have to have all his disciples lose their lives? But in one way, you know, we look at that as a tragedy, but, you know, the loss of life and then waking up and being in heaven, that's not such a bad deal for anybody. Right, right. right. You, you can't threaten a real Christian with heaven. Right. Right. Really. <laughs> right. <laughs> Stop sharing the gospel. I'm going to send you to heaven. Um, the difference is we're all going to lose our lives. Yeah. Every, hum- every person listening, there's going to be a day when we lose our life. It's not about how, how you die. It's really about how you live. It's how are you going to use your life? And that's what they chose is there's nothing more important than using my life, spending my life, sharing the good news of the gospel. And if, if eventually that makes somebody mad and they take it, that's fine because I'm absent from the body. As Paul said, absent from the body means I'm present with the Lord. Yeah. Right. Well, that's probably a great place to wrap up. Yeah. Uh, it, it is, is the thing that sets up our series that we're in in the book of Acts. And so we're the Bible guys and we will see you next time. Don't forget to sign up on the Bible and uh, make sure that you uh, leave a comment or uh, give us a review or subscribe. All the things that are necessary to help these things move forward. You're helping us out. So we'll see you next time.